All right, Matthew chapter number 6. I think one of the greatest keys that we will find is this sometimes overlooked passage of Scripture. It's, it's not always deemed as significant. And whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're watching online or whether you're engaging it as much as you should, I think this piece is the game changer that I personally have seen change my life and that I believe will change yours. And I most certainly want to push you towards it because I know it works. I've seen it work. I actually want to do three days of just this in June, just a three-day prayer piece where we come and pray for three days straight because I've seen it work. I'm not talking about something that I think works. I know it works. And if you understand prayer well, it can produce amazing fruit in your life. I, I want to just really crystallize this to you today, which I think will be very helpful on exploring this aspect of prayer that you may want to write some notes down that will help you in it. Because here's the thing. When, hey man, when someone gets sick, you're going to need to know how to do it. When you get sick, God forbid, you're going to need to know how to do it. When you and I need more money, we're going to need to know how to do it. When a problem comes and it's really bad and you can't rely on someone else to help you, you're going to need to know how to do it. They're, they are saying they're going to add on social media spaces a prayer button where people can click to show that they are praying for you. Well, I don't want that because that's as much as they're going to do for you is click that button. And that's, I want somebody that if you tell me that I need you to pray, they are going to do it. But I don't want to go to just the preacher because he may miss your call. He may have an issue like Cash App does. He may not be available. You got to know how to do it. And the church has to stop telling people, you got to pray. Because that's great, but if I don't know how, it means nothing. The more you pray, the more weight you have in the Spirit. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. Now, God personally wants to hear from you at all times. What do you mean by that, Pastor? God just wants to hear from you. On your drive to work, talk to Him. Nothing deep. You don't have to scream at God. God is not deaf. I don't pray like they pray. Maybe you're not as emotive as others. That's fine. The reality is, is that you gain more weight the more you do it. So the disciples, they were with Jesus for three and a half years, and they didn't ask Jesus to teach us how to read the Bible. They did read the Septuagint. They didn't ask him, teach us how to do miracles. Because they started to connect the way this guy is able to do what he does is because he prays. And I get people ask me all the time, well, what, who do you know? Who are you connected to? And I will tell them all the time, the key that I believe to God opening up significant doors is you pray them in. Now, y'all can do all the other stuff, chase the bag and do all that. I'm going to do what works for me because I've seen it work. Now, you can take money, you can take cars away, you can take houses away, but if you know how to pray, you can get all that stuff back because that is the power. So the disciples said, I want to know not how to grow my Instagram followers because there's some people who have more followers than you than are broke. 
They got more recognition, but they have nothing going on. They have virtual success. So here's what I want to tell you. The disciples said, you know what, Jesus, we, we've, we've been watching you, and uh, we need to learn from you. But what we want you to teach us is not how to do miracles. We want you to teach us how to pray. It seems like a simple question, but it's really profound because these men really wanted to know the secret to his power. And he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to help you. Matthew 6, verse 9 through 13, if you don't know it, you should. It is the prayer that you typically were taught if you grew up in a Christian home. You were either taught Psalm 23. Or you were taught the Lord's Prayer. Now, I encourage you, and I, I mean, we probably need to get back to doing this and teaching our kids that prayer so that they know it because it's a foundational prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. It's, well, they should hear it more than funerals. So I, I want us to really dive into this that, that you know, when I read, some, some, I learned the Lord's Prayer wrong because when people read it in the Bible, there's certain words that I say that are not in there that I don't know where it came from, but I'm rolling with what I learned. My parents taught me it this way. But anyway, uh, when people we read it, I'd be like, I don't remember the Lord's Prayer sound like that. Maybe I learned it out of the King James Version. They're reading the NIV. Um, it says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So number one is Jesus is not telling you to pray that way. He's just trying to give you a model. Can I make it practical? Pastor, who am I supposed to marry? Your, your daughter, could, well, my daughter's going to be nuts, but that's a whole other story. Um, but let's say my kids will get married. Um, who should I get married? Okay, you need to marry someone who's this way, this way, this way, this way. I'm giving you a prescription to find something similar. I'm not saying it has to be exact, I am saying this is a model that you need to look at. So Jesus starts off by saying, I want to make it simple so that anyone can pray. And he starts off by saying, our Father. That's so powerful. Why did he say, not, why did he just start the prayer and say, my Father who art in heaven? Because he's not just mine. He's all of ours. The same way that you see me call him, is the same way you can call him. So he's establishing up front that he's all of ours. No one has a hold to him to where they can say, oh, no, I got him and nobody else has him. He's our father. <laughs> he's our father. I want to give you a subject title today. Very important. I want to talk to you about the immortality of prayer. The immortality of prayer. That you know your prayers never stop when you release them from your mouth. Some of you are living off your grandmother's prayers. Y'all ain't hear what I just said. Prayer is, there is an immortality of prayer. When you pray for your children, even when you leave the earth, your prayers still remain. I'm proving to you scripturally, if you pray for your spouse, your prayers still remain in the earth. When you pray, those prayers remain. They, they don't vanish away. Revelation 5 verse number 8 is a very important verse. It says this, that the angels go before God and they say, God, here is a vial that contains all of the prayers of the saints that they have prayed before you, which simply means that whenever you pray, God bottles what you pray, and he remembers what you pray, and he does not forget what you pray, and he did not forget what your mama prayed about you. He did not forget what your daddy prayed about you. He did not forget what your grandmother prayed about you, and he did not forget about what some slaves prayed that didn't even know who we were, and they said there's going to come a generation that's going to live a life that we've never seen. 
the immortality of prayer. I believe it is so that there are older people that love you so much and they say, I'm praying for you. And that generation really meant it. They meant it with their heart. They meant it with their soul. I'm not sure this culture really means it when they say I'm praying because they will do a quick, yeah, I'm praying for you. No, I need somebody who's actually going to take the time and stay before God on my behalf. Revelations 5 verse 8 says that the prayers of the righteous remain in a vow before God, that God still remembers the cries and the utterances of his children. There is Augustine of a hippo says this, thou hast made us for thyself, and our hearts are restless until they find rest in thee. I'll say it again. Thou hast made us for thyself, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in thee. You know why you don't have peace? It's because there's a spot in your life and mine that only God can fill. <laughs> you know, there was a gas shortage this week, and I had my wife's car taking it to get gas, and we couldn't find any gas because people were and I went to four gas stations, and the only thing I needed was gas. It didn't matter, and the light was red. It started off a little higher, and then as I kept driving around, it just went further and further red. And my thought was, man, if I get stuck on the road with no gas, that means I got to call somebody to put gas, and there's no one who I can call because all the gas stations don't have gas. And so I'm sitting there panicking because I need gas, and at the time, I go to the lady and find a gas station that has gas, and she says, well, you know, all we have is 93 left. At, we, we don't care. We need gas. It don't matter if you had 98 left. That's what we're going to pay because we need gas. There's, the car only wanted gas. It didn't need anything else. And a lot of us are trying to fill the red light in our lives with other things. When what you need is a spiritual connection with God that only God can feel. I tell people all the time, um, when you can get a big house, and you can get a big job, and you can get a big car, and you can get a big car note, and you can get a beautiful bay, and you can get a, a decent bay, or you can get a downgraded bay, whatever the case is. Um, you still will have a spot in your life that only God can fill. So I want to kind of start us off on, well, like, how do I pray? Like, okay, teach us how to pray. He, he start, number one, this is very important. This is so deep. It's super deep. It's like deeper than deep. The only way to pray better is to pray. There's no greater way to pray. As much as y'all talk on the phone about what's going on in life, in church, in the world, and what this, what was said, what was that, why not take some time and carve it out and say, you know what? I need you and I to pray every week. Let's start off once a week. You pray 10, I pray 10. Because if you can't pray an hour, Jesus says this, you couldn't even last an hour? He's really speaking to leaders because the disciples were leaders. And he was saying to leaders, if you can't pray an hour, you're doing something wrong. Not pray and break into a song. Because you ran out of stamina to pray. Because some of y'all pray with fillers. So he says, no, I, I just asked you, remember, my mama grew up, Jesus prayed the same way. There was no musicians like Pastor Enoch playing in the background. There was no singers singing up there. They just prayed straight. When you pray long enough, you get a rhythm to your prayer. It's like going to the gym, you start finding your rhythm. And then after a while, the Spirit of God will take over you 
and you won't even know that you've been praying this long. Now here it is. We all worship something. Worship is only given to what you think is worth of it. We ascribe worship to anything that we think is worth it. Whether it's money, whether it's status, whether it's fame, we worship something. God's like, I just want you to worship me. Give me the desire. As, as hard as you chase after whatever you're chasing, I want you to do that for me. And it's a real easy secret. God says, if you chase me, whatever you've been chasing, I'll make chase you. <laughs> uh, let me give you this quote. Uh, I think that's a good one. Because I just, it's not in my notes, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Um, th this is a good one. Because I think a lot of times we make decisions without praying. I don't make big decisions without praying. And after I pray, I need God to confirm what I pray. Because a lot of times we are in such a rush to make a decision that we want God to validate the decision that our emotions wanted to make. And you need to be sure that God told you what you're praying for. So let me just give you a scripture. I can't find it, but it was good. Um, what, when, when scripture says God, puts the de God gives us the desires of our heart, that is a scripture that's misinterpreted. What I want you to understand is that God gives us desire. That desire that you have is not the desire that you have. It's a desire that God put in your heart. Now you got this desire, and now you got to pray that this desire comes to pass. That's why it is important for you and I to ensure that when we are asking God about what we feel in our heart, we know that it's God that put it in our hearts. Because a lot of times we're saying like, Lord, I want this, I want this, I want this, and God's like, no, I want you to want this. That's why I put it in your heart. You didn't wake up desiring to want that. God said, no, I gave you that, and I wanted you to want that, and that's why I gave that in your heart. And so you and I need to understand that that's very important, that whatever you're feeling in your heart right in this moment, God gave it to you. I want you to think about what you're desiring in your heart right now. Oh, I found it. Y'all ready? This is good. Y'all need to write this one down. I live by this. And sometimes, I told you, sometimes when you pray, God says yes. Sometimes God says no. Sometimes God says grow. Okay? If you make a blessing, you will miss a blessing. And the blessing you miss will be bigger than the one you made say it one more time. If you make a blessing, you will miss a blessing. And the blessing you miss will be bigger than the one you made. One more time. If you make a blessing, you will miss a blessing. And the blessing you miss will be bigger than the one you made. All right? So let me, let me go on because I'm running out of time. There, there's a, a hymnal of prayers that says, Today is God and the beginning was God. Today is God. Tomorrow will be God. Who can make an image of God? He has no body. He is the word which comes out of your mouth. That word, it is no more. It's the past, and it still lives. So is God. God is the creator who sews the heavens together like cloth. Now, I want to say this. This is helpful. When we go to God and pray, 
I need to talk to him. However you communicate, that's how you need to pray. God, listen, this is where I'm at. This is how I'm feeling. This is where my money is. This is where my sex life is. This is where you need to talk to God about everything. God, I'm lonely. I'm horny. I'm... I know that kind of shocked you because you think God don't know. And maybe you struggle in areas that you're not telling God because God's like, I want to hear it, but you ain't telling me. I, I want to find a husband. I want to find a wife. I want to find, I need to get a new career. I feel behind. I feel like everybody else is leaving me. God needs to hear that because God is not surprised by what you tell him. People may be, but God is not. And until you can have an honest relationship with God, you won't have a deep one with Him. Until you can have an honest relationship with God, you won't have a deep one. Like, Lord, I just want to punch this person right in their face. Like, God, just one time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's almost like we think like God is like, oh my God, I can't believe that came out of you. <laughs> like God knows. This is what I tell my son. I tell him, whether he believes it or not, I tell him. Because it's important that he knows that. I say, son, every day, well, every time I try, drop him off of school, I say, son, if you get in trouble, tell me first. Because I can't help what I don't know. Like, if you got in a fight and you got suspended, I'm going to go to the office and cut up for you. Now, when we get back in the car, I'm like, bro, what you thinking, man? What you? But, but if you don't tell me, I can't help you. He getting older now. He's doing his hair. And I, I be like, right, you got a girlfriend yet? My dad came out, bro. I called him. I called his cell phone. I, I never heard his voicemail. I called his cell phone, and his voicemail says, leave a message, bro. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> Who is this? But I tell him all the time, if you tell me, I can help you. Because sometimes vulnerability is the greatest level of trust. God ain't like us. You can't tell God something bad and then the next day you go to him and he's talking about, mm. Mm. No, you, you, guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you that when you go to God, you need to go to God, seriously, when you go to God, you need to go to God with a pencil and not a pen. Because we are consistent on saying, this is what I believe God is going to do. And sometimes what we want is not what God wants. But it's important for you and I to be open to what God wants. I want you to start praying about your career. God, open the right doors. I want your relationship to go beyond just talking to God about your personal needs and missing out on great opportunities for God to increase you. God, introduce me to the people I need to know. Let me tell you, you can, sometimes people want to go high. The higher up you go, the more time you're going to have to spend with God asking Him, what door is yours and what door did I make? Because whatever doors you make, you got to sustain. So practice the habit now of inviting God into spaces of your life that matter. I'm not following anybody. I'm going to follow God. I have people that call, PD, this is what you need to be doing. This is hot. I'm telling you, shop, I can put you on this. And I say, nah, I don't think that's it. What do you mean, no? How could you tell me, no? Because they're not spending time with God. 
Whatever you produce in the flesh, you must nurture by the flesh. When you're producing things in the spirit, it becomes easier for you because it's no longer you doing it. It's God holding up the weight. It's God sustaining the stuff. It is no longer you doing it. It is your total confidence in God. It's, it's God's, your confidence in God. Now, let me tell you this. Just because you pray doesn't mean you won't fight things. You'll fight things all the time. Cash app closes. That's a big stream of revenue for our church. <laughs> but am I tripping? No. I pray that God, whatever you want to do, close the things now so that I don't rely on them later. Y'all don't hear me. So sometimes you, sometimes God will do you an advance favor. And it comes at an inconvenient time. But sometimes God will allow it to happen inconveniently so you won't forget it. So here it is. Give God prayer. He will give you a plan for your path. Give God prayer. He'll give you a plan for your path. When you pray well, then you start to hear well. Being prophetic is God telling you what you need to hear because the heavens are speaking to you. I don't want to know who's talking to you. I want to know are the heavens talking to you. Because there are people who will call me and say, what is God saying? And I say, give me a moment. There are times where God doesn't say anything. And there are moments where God does speak, and it's like that's the word of God for that moment. But because you could hear from God, you need people that can hear from God to give you direction. A friend of mine called, he was so disturbed. He said, man, I got a building, just got this building in another state. It's an amazing building. He said, I'm, I think I'm about to throw in the towel because the city is fighting me and they're giving me all types of issues. And I said, man, that's crazy. I started talking to him. I said, man, let's pray about it. We prayed on the phone and I said, I heard God. And he said, well, what did you hear? I said, God told me to tell you to stay in the fight. He says, what? That means I might go to legal battles. I said, that if God is God, you're going to see him bring you through. And he made this decision. He said, Pastor D, I'm going to. now he has another building that he could have went to. He has two contracts on a building. One isn't giving him any problems. The other one is. He's trying to determine what location to go into. I said, go to the place that has the problem because that's what God told me. Now, it's not my job to prove what God said. It's God's job. He calls me back and says, you won't believe the attorney of the building that I'm trying to get is going to cover all of the legal fees. He's going to step in and handle the legal fight for me if I'm just willing to hold on. And he says this, the owner of the building says, as long as there's a fight, you'll have no rent. So this entire time, for the next five, six, seven months, he will have zero rent that he has to pay. Why? Because when you hear God well, you see results happen in your life. Yeah. Hear God well. You got to hear him well. You got to hear him well. Let me close with this. This is going to be super helpful. Remember I said your prayers remain? They remain. So don't think when you pray, God, watch over my day, that it's wasted. We used to pray, God, take the wheel. We, we don't pray when we drive anymore. That's not something that we do often. But we should. We should. Sometimes the prayers of our yes, sometimes the prayers of the seasons that we were really strong are the things that are carrying us in this season. Remember that season where you really, 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 really pray? Sometimes that prayer is the thing that's carrying you in this season. Now, this is going to be super helpful. I don't want to preach it. I want to teach it because it's got to get in your soul. But I want you to see this picture. This is kind of funny. But I want you to see this picture that's going to be up here. 
of these pictures of these shoes. Now, I hope they can put it online for you guys too. Okay, so I was trying to get this outfit together. Well, actually, somebody was getting this outfit together for me. And they told me to order these sneakers. Now, as you can see on the top of the sneakers, it's got some, like, foam. Y'all see that? Those on the right, you can't really see it as well because y'all kind of being blocked. But that's why we put screens up there. But the faster you give, the faster those screens go up. But no, let me just say this. Uh, <laughs> so you should see this foam that's, that's on there, right? So when I got the shoe, I asked my wife, I said, um, these look kind of unfinished. <laughs> like Nike forgot to, um, to stitch the whole thing. So the guy that asked me to order them, I, I, I just, I said, this is the type of stuff you want me to wear. It doesn't make any sense. These don't look good. So, you know, after, then I asked my wife, she said, I, I mean, those look weird, honestly. And then I thought about if I wore them to church, I just know how bad y'all would talk about me. I, I just know how some of them, they just look at you in the front row and be like, girl, look at Pastor's shoes. You see that? Them shoes don't even line up. And I just, I just thought about it. And I could see them all giggling. And I'm like, what are they laughing at? And they texting each other, taking pictures of the shoe. And they sending it from row to row. It's going from the front row to the back row. And I started thinking, I said, you know, then I asked somebody else. I said, hey, hey, man, what, what do you think about these shoes? And they said, Pastor, those shoes look terrible. I would send them back. They don't look finished. They don't. So I said, you know what? These look awkward. But let me call the manufacturer. So I called the manufacturer, which is Nike, and I said, hey, I got some shoes. It looked like the, the, the people in the factory may have forgotten. They might have took a smoke break or something. They, they, forgot to, they forgot to come back and do it. And the guy said, send me a picture. I sent them a picture. He says, oh, no. These are exactly how they're supposed to look. Yeah, these are, these are 77s. These are classic throwbacks. So, so these are how they look. And I said, okay, wow, all right. He said, you want to keep them? I said, yeah, I want to keep them. God was just so shocked that that's what happened. So then I went online and got the return re receipt and I returned them. But when I went to the store, I went to the store and I said, man, you got to be, you got to be kidding me, man. These shoes can't be finished. He said, uh, no, sir, they actually are finished. That's how they're supposed to look. He said, I know they look awkward, but we didn't create them. Some seasons in your life look awkward, and you keep going to everybody else. Is this the right season? Is this the right season? Is this the right season? Instead of going to the master and saying, am I in the right season? Are you creating me for such a time as this? And God says, no, I know it looks awkward, but I made it like that. So Mano, what I was saying, when you walked in, was that these shoes looked awkward, but they were exactly what the manufacturer wanted. Maybe your life looks awkward right now. And maybe you're going to everybody asking them, is this awkward? Is this awkward? Is this awkward? And the manufacturer's like, if you called me, I would have told you why I made it that way in the time that it was made for such. But I got another one for you. Your prayers never stop. Keep, keep them going. Put them in the atmosphere. Let them fill your days. Close your phone off. Take some time away and go see God's face. Don't tell me what you heard in your heart. Tell me what the Lord said. Yeah, you got to have a personal word for your life. I was, I was talking to um, Melvin. And... Uh, he said to me, he said, um, Pastor, you got your seatbelt on? I said, uh, yeah. He said, I want to tell you a story. 
I had talked to Melvin two days before he had got into this chemical fire. The Lord put him on my heart. I voice messaged him. And I was reminding him of the leadership meeting. And uh, he said, Pastor, big, Pastor, little brother, I'll be there. Uh, Lord willing. Cool. And, and he's, he's, he got in this chemical fire, but all through his story, I'm hearing God in it. See, he, he was on top of a, you know, in the gas tank, how you roll over these little things and it's like boo boo, and people put gas on the, in these little, in this little hole in the ground. Well, there's, there's a spot where they actually go down. It's not that deep. They go down to, to fill it or do whatever they do. And that day, his boss told him to go down. And he said, well, no, this training guy is here. Let me let him go down so I can train him. And I'll just watch what he's doing. And even though we may not see God's hands, sometimes God knows a thing's going to happen. Now, let me help fix this. Because some of you are like, well, why don't God stop everything? That's a great question. I don't know. But I do know if he stopped everything, why would we need to pray? If he did stop everything, why would we need to follow him? It's just going to happen. It's just robotic. You know, there's no, there is evil in this world. And every time I go to a different city, I can feel the evil of that city. Because every place has a principality. So you got to understand where you move and what's in, what's in that region. Right? Just, like, okay. I want to, I'll teach you how to do So he is on fire, but there's a car wash there. He knows enough to go hit this PVC pipe to get water, which is allowing him to get the gas off of him and all that stuff. Now, crazy story is, is that when you pray, God sends angels to accomplish what you asked. We don't pray to angels. We pray to God who sends angels. So he's on fire. He knows to hit this water. This water's flushing out the fire that's on him and his partner. And for some weird reason or another, his manager never called 911. They hear a fire truck. Melvin runs out there and says, the fire truck is for us, and they pass him. He's on fire in Miami. Gas on him in Miami. Miami's already like fire. The fire truck passes him. He's in the, in the car wash getting water on him. And, and here's the craziest thing that I know there's a God that looks after him. Two weeks ago, he was, he was serving with me. And Melvin's had strong seasons of prayer. I believe that the prayers that we pray in some former seasons cover us in other seasons. That's why there are seasons where you don't feel like praying. You need to have a prayer partner that can charge your battery when you're not in the season of praying. That's why there were seasons where Jesus didn't feel like praying. He brought his disciples up the mountain with him to help him pray, but they weren't very much help. Now, here's the crazy thing about this story. He's on fire. He sees the fire truck coming. He waves the fire truckman down. He's mad telling the fire, how y'all missed us? Y'all passed us by. And the fireman's like, oh my God. He jumps into work, starts cutting off the clothes, starts doing all this. And, and, and he, the, Melvin sits there trying to ask him, 
Like, how come y'all didn't come to us when we called the first time? He said, call? No one called us. He said, the only reason why we were coming back was because my boss had a craving for Arby's. And where you were was an Arby's. If you think that's coincidence, if you think that's just happened because it happened, I'm telling you there are mothers that prayed, there are intercessors that got up at five in the morning and it may not feel like it's working and it may not feel like it's doing anything and it may not feel like it's moving anything, but I'm telling you that there is no way you can open up your mouth to God and it not move something. Here's the reality. I need you not to minimize the power of your own mouth. Some of you used to wake up at 6 a.m. and pray. You stopped. Your spirit shows it. and I have to be the portal by which God works through. I'm over time, but I want to take, I got baby dedication to do. I want, I want to take 120 seconds. I want us to take 120 seconds. I, I, want, I want you to practice praying. I want you to practice. I want to help you. So we're going to start. I want you to stand because it's easier. You know they kneeled for a reason. The reason why they kneeled, number one, is they kneeled because they knew they were talking to a holy God. Now, if your legs are in pain, you're fine. You can sit down. If you're pregnant, sit down. The reason why they kneeled is because they realized they were talking. Nope, not it. The reason why they, they, they prayed, the reason why they prayed kneeling is because they, um, they knew they were talking to a king. And number two, it, it keeps your focus on your prayer. But I do want to help this. So some prayer requires atmosphere, and, and sometimes it's, it's good to have the right atmosphere. And, and uh, that's important. But... Um, there's no way you can't start talking to God about who he is and he not respond to who you are. Some of you will escape death by your own words. Don't, listen y'all, don't think for a moment that people are not as wicked as you think they are. Some want you dead. But your prayers will create barriers around you. Your prayers create barriers around you. So for even my brothers who are like, bro, I don't bro, I don't pray. I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna need to know how to do it can't depend on people to do it. Then one thing that happens when you get hungry and you need to depend on someone to cook for you, you're in trouble. So I want us to begin. How do I begin? Just tell God who he is. Like, you're everything to me. You're my joy. You're my peace. You're my everything. You're, you're the reason I live. You're the reason I move. You're the reason I have my being. God, I thank you. I praise you because you love me. That's all you're doing. Just take 15 seconds and tell him how much you love him, how much you need him, how much you appreciate him, how much you value him. 15 seconds. We got it.
Come on, 15 seconds, just beginning to tell God how much you love him, how much you appreciate him, how much you value him. Come on, my brothers. Come on, my sisters. I love you because you love me. Just tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you care for him because he cares for you. Yes, I love you because you love me. I love you because you care for me. I love you because there's no one like you. There's no one above you. There's no one like you. God, I thank you because of that. I thank you because you care for me. When everyone else left, you were right there for me. I praise you because of your faithfulness to me. You are so faithful to me. I don't know why, but you are. And I thank you. And I praise you. And I magnify you. You are God and there's no... Listen, don't pray in your head. Open up your mouth and say it. I know you got a mask on, but lift up your voice. And Father, I thank you. And Father, I praise you. And Father, I magnify you. I glorify you. I thank you because you're God. Everything that I need, you already have. I know you are God. I know you care for me. I know you look after me. Now, let's go ahead and ask God to watch over our lives. Keep our lives concerning everything that concerns us. Protect us in our vehicles. Protect us as we go. Protect us as we go. Protect us as we drive. Watch over us. Keep our minds safe. Keep our children safe as they're in school, as they're working, as they're driving. Would you be faithful unto us? Keep us, oh God, the God who is the keeper of days, the God who watches over us, the God who leans into us. Now let's pray for favor. Father, yeah, there you go. Father, I thank you for favor. I thank you that you can give it to us. I thank you that if we repent of our sins, if we ask you for forgiveness, you're faithful and just to heal whatever we ask. So God, do what money cannot do. Do what resources cannot do. Do what connections cannot do. I ask you to do, God, to show up for me, to show up on my behalf, to do what only you can do. I trust that you're going to do it in the name of Jesus. Open up doors for me. Open up ways for me. Shut the doors that I don't need to be a part of. Let me know the doors that I need to walk through. Help me to have confidence as I walk through these doors in the name of Jesus. Let me not be afraid. Let me not be intimidated. Help me to meet new people that are assigned to my life in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for new opportunities. I thank you for new relationships. I thank you for increase in the name of Jesus. I pray for financial favor. I pray for financial, yeah, there you go. I pray for financial increase in the name of Jesus. I thank you for sending it from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I thank you, Father, that you know my need before I even ask of it. You take care of my need. If you look after the widow, if you look after the birds of the air, the lilies of the field, how much more will you look after those who call upon the name of the Lord thy God? You are everything to me. You are more than life to me. Come on now, thank him for hearing you. Come on, thank him for hearing you. Thank him for hearing you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, there it is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank it works in your car. It works in the hospital room. It works in the boardroom. It works everywhere you go. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you heard my prayer. It wasn't long, but you heard me. I thank you that you heard me. It wasn't deep, but you heard me. I thank you that you know what I need. I thank you that you cover me. I thank you that you shield me. I thank you, Father, that your angels encamp round about me from the left into my right, from my front into my back. You are the keeper of my days. You are the lifter of my head. I praise you. I magnify you. I glorify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 From the lifting of my hands to the clapping of my hands to the lifting of my voice from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Yes, you are worthy. Yes, you are worthy. Worthy to receive all glory. Worthy to receive all 
See, when people pray together, it's called a corporate anointing. It's where we all can feel it. It's called the corporate anointing. Would you open up your mouth and shout something to God right now? It's called the corporate anointing. It's something that you can't manufacture in your house. It's a corporate anointing. It's a corporate anointing. It's a corporate anointing. It's here for you. It's here for me. It's the corporate anointing. It's the corporate anointing. seconds we're moving on it's in your house it's online it's called the corporate anointing wherever two or three are gathered in my name you establish a corporate anointing it's a corporate anointing it's not an anointing that you can manufacture it's an anointing that only comes from God pray you open up the airwaves now you can hear what the Lord is saying you can prophesy you can hear what the Spirit of God says you can hear you can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying you can hear it you can hear it now you can clearly hear what God is saying to you because you got a right atmosphere you can clarify 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 I know we're programmed for two hours, but I I want to just kind of flow with what God does. I know I got maybe I guess I'm gonna do it. Um, but when you pray right, you hear God. I want us, I want us to I want us to stretch our hands. I want us, let me do something a little different. Wilkins and Enoch switch, because y'all gonna train each other. I wanna um I want us all to pray and stretch our hands towards Monique. Because when you pray well, you can feel the weights of others. You can feel the weight. And God reveals so you won't carry weight by yourself. Would you take a moment and just, she's our state attorney. Would you just lift up her name before God for the next 60 seconds? When you start to feel people's burdens, that means you have a prophetic gift. That means God lets you walk in the presence of people and you start to feel what they feel. Father, I thank you for an assignment. I thank you that you give her an assignment and I thank you that the assignment is yours. And Father, you're going to complete this assignment in the name of Jesus. Father, you're going to anoint her to do this assignment in the name of Jesus. You're going to assign her to do a role and we come against every scheme that's being plotted, every type of thing that's being orchestrated in the name of Jesus. We come against money that's being passed under tables that would fight against who she is in the name of Jesus. We come against people with influence that would try to sabotage with the work that she's doing in the name of Jesus. I see you in the name of the Lord. Father, we cause their camp to be in confusion now. 
the name of Jesus. You will have people that will come to you and say, I don't know what it is, but we tried something and it didn't work because there's a hedge of protection roundabout in the name of Jesus. I pray that you'll produce a hedge of protection around her family, around her children, around her staff in the name of Jesus. And even those staff people that are there that are double-minded, I pray, God, that you'll align them to the vision now. All the backbiting and all the texting that's going on secretly in the name of Jesus. I pray that you'll give her eyes to see, discernment to know in the name of the Lord. I pray that you'll give her the wisdom of Solomon, that she'll be able to govern with authority and govern with wisdom. I thank you the weight of the city that's upon her shoulders. You will let her feel your warmth, feel your embrace. Give her the strength to carry. Let her not take it home with her. Let her have a good season of rest. I call you to a season of rest. I pray you don't toss and turn in this next season. I pray you rest, that they're in the hands of God, that God's hands is on you. And I pray, God, that you'll allow her to rest in you, not to take any burden. That you won't allow her to take any burden of hope with her, but you'll allow her to know that her hands, her life is in your hands, and you shall order her steps and you shall organize her steps and you shall order her path in the name of Jesus. I pray that you'll make every crooked path straight. I pray that every weapon that's formed against her shall not prosper in the name of Jesus. On a corporate anointing. It's called a corporate anointing. Would you put the bass up? Put your hands on Wilkins' shoulder and pray with him as he plays. I want to pray for the babies next. I want to do this real quick. I want to. I want to. So there is this weird. There, there is this grace, and I want to help you understand it. So when you begin to pray for people and you start to look at them and you start to feel what they feel and you start to sense what they sense, that this is an anointing that you cannot learn in school. It's not something you can learn by books. It's not something that someone can teach you. You just got to have it. And I'm praying that God would give you this same anointing that when you pray, you can sense the birth. And some of you already have it and you don't have any language to it. I want to give you language to it. It's not a prophetic gift as you're saying, thus saith the Lord, I see this and I see that. It is God giving you the ability to feel what other people feel so you know how to intercede. It is a gift that God gives to intercessors. They have the capacity and ability to feel what other people are feeling without even, even them saying a word. So God, I pray that as your people begin to pray, you will give them a passion for what's on your heart so that they can pray effectively. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will give them this insight that only comes from you, that they'll be able to see their bloodline as they pray. They'll be able to see things that they would not be able to see with the natural eye. It is not, and I pray by the Spirit of God that it hits our worship team, it hits our singing team, it hits our minstrels, that there is a different type of anointing that flows with this. It's not a sound, it's not a song, it's an anointing and I pray that it falls on them and it falls on the congregation and it falls on the balcony. I pray that when they're driving by a homeless man, they can feel the infirmity that's upon them. I pray that when they drive in the supermarket and they meet a cashier, they know exactly what to pray for. I pray for timidity, that they will not be shy of the supernatural gifts. This next season is not going to be natural. It's going to be supernatural. God's going to do some 
supernatural things that's going to manifest naturally. How are you going to do it? Not raising up business owners. It's going to happen by raising up intercessors that when they go to a business deal, they say, Lord, give me wisdom. And the wisdom that God gives them will produce great gain and they'll bring the gain back into the house of the Lord. How did it happen? It happened because we started to be the people that are intercessory people. Can you lift up the sound of praise to the Lord right in this place? Woo. I said, can you lift up a sound of praise in this place? I said, can you lift up a sound of praise in this place? I said, can you, whether you're in the balcony or on the floor, I said, can you lift up a sound, a sound that only comes from God, a sound that only God can give. I don't care if you got a mask on. I don't care if it's not your personality. I don't care if it's not your style. I'm telling you, God moved in this room and he moved in this room for you. You shall live and declare the works of God. May God favor your house. May God strengthen the cause of your influence. May God broaden the horizon of your landscape. May God raise you up before great men and women. May God introduce, I feel the Holy Ghost. May God bring you before great men before your time. May the anointing of God rest in your house, rest in your job, go to your home. May your home become the sanctuary. May your car become the sanctuary. May it be the bed chamber that God produces life in. Father, we give you glory. 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 It is so. God's been asking some of you to create this space in your home. God's been asking you to create this space. All this was was just to stir you to the space that God wants you to recreate. This is the model that God wants you to have in your own space. Not just, not just you, pastor, that's you too. That's, that's the space that God wants you to reside in. That's the, that's the glory that God wants you to reside in. 